Hello everyone, this is Moshmi Mukherjee from Open Jindal Global University, India. I'm now going to share with all of you findings from Cero COVID-19 survey uh, from the Indian context. Uh, I'm going to share here with all of you uh, findings, uh, particularly with regards to student success and well-being at Indian universities during the pandemic, as we understood uh, from the COVID-19 survey uh, that we conducted here uh, within India. Now, of course, the, all of you know about the background of the study at, uh, steered by the Cero Consortium based at Berkeley uh, to better prepare to support students in need uh, of, uh, during emergencies like the COVID-19. And these were the five domains uh, into which uh, the survey was, uh, uh, you know, the survey tool and instrument was uh, divided, as all of you know already very well. Uh, but today, in uh, today's presentation, we are going to specifically focus on the health and well being aspect, findings from the health and well being aspect. But before I would share with you findings from India with regards to this, um, let me tell you a little bit about our sample. Uh, now, we had a um, a response of uh, not as much as in the U.S. context, but uh, 7,688 students uh, responded to the survey from across India. We had to drop one, uh, 1,263 responses because of uh, because the, they were incomplete. Uh, so our analysis is based on total sample size of 6,425 from 38 Indian universities. Uh, four of them are central universities that are administered by the federal government, the central government in India. 20 of them are uh, state universities administered by local uh, state governments, and 14 of them were private universities. And as you can see, this is uh, the distribution of uh, the degree level of students who participated in the survey in central universities, state public university, private university, and overall distribution of students, as you can see, 77% of the students are under from the undergrad program and 23% from graduate programs, which in the Indian context is referred to as the postgraduate program, masters and PhD students. Now, in terms of our sample distribution for some uh, very interesting reasons, uh, uh, we don't know why. Uh, a majority of the participants, as you can see, uh, in our sample, they were coming or from state private universities, 65%, 3% from central universities, and 32% uh, from state public universities. Now, uh, with regards to our sample, a little bit more I wanted to share with all of you uh, with reg regards to um, the, the social categories. Majority of our participants, this is another very interesting aspect of our sample that we found is majority belongs to uh, the aspiring middle class of the Indian population. Uh, you know, Indian middle class is also quite stratified as you can see in the uh, diagram over here on the screen. Um, uh, but uh, uh, you know, very few working class uh, and poor uh, students and also quite interestingly, very few wealthy students. Uh, compared to a large majority of aspiring middle class. With regards to gender uh, division also, it was quite interesting. Majority in, in our sample uh, who responded to the survey were women, 55.3% uh, compared to only 13.3% male. And uh, we do have a significant number of uh, students, uh, as you can see, uh, who chose not to respond to the gender question. And uh, uh, moving on from here with regards to our key findings in terms of student mental health and well being, as you can see, um, uh, you know, not uh, the, the, with regards to the questions that we had with regards to not being able to stop worrying or feeling down, depressed or hopeless, feeling nervous, anxious, or on the edge. Um, we did not find a single response, not a single response from students who uh, said that they did not uh, feel like this, uh, you know, uh, over uh, several days or more than half the days or nearly every day. So that means 
students that uh, uh, not a single student uh, was uh, in a positive mental uh, state of mental health. Almost everybody, all the students who responded to the survey, they have experienced uh, negative feelings of worrying, depression, anxiety, or almost uh, uh, on a regular basis uh, during the pandemic. And this uh, uh, this chart, all the more, uh, you know, if you look at uh, the responses of students, it becomes all the more clear that uh, all the students who responded to the survey have gone through uh, negative uh, emotions and feelings of depression and anxiety uh, 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 during the pandemic. Uh, so, with regards to mental health and well-being of the students, and this is very, uh, you know, respective of the difference in context, I should say, very is similar kind of finding with regards to the US context. Uh, the survey indicates that most students, irrespective of socioeconomic and uh, gender um, and other backgrounds, uh, have faced high levels of stress, anxiety, and worries during the pandemic. Uh, now, the recommendations, of course, based on what we have found and based on the existing structure of higher education in India, we thought about like three tiered kind of recommendation at the macro level, at the meso level and at uh, the uh, institutional level, because within the Indian context, higher education uh, falls under the concurrent list of um, the Indian constitution, which is a priority for both the uh, central and the state government. So at the macro level for the central government, definitely uh, an emergency contingency fund uh, needs to be developed and particularly to support um, online telephonic wellness and counseling services for students, faculty, and higher education professionals. This is what we have uh, recommended even at the meso level. Uh, for the state governments and responsible institutions, we have recommended to build an emergency corpus front for state public universities and colleges and wellness and counseling services to be available in local languages. As many of you here might know that the Indian uh, context is very multilingual and multicultural. Each state of India has its own state language. So uh, for counseling and wellness services to be available in local state language is of paramount importance for the state universities. At the micro institutional level also, we have recommended to develop an emergency um, corpus of institutional funds, uh, particularly to create robust services for mental health and well-being of students and staff. Um, and, and also to improve communication and design processes for better peer interaction uh, at, the, at the institutional level. This is something we have recommended based on the findings of our study. Now, uh, of course, the Indian context of higher education is extremely diverse and there is huge, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, inequality of uh, resources available uh, to private institutions compared to public institutions because of uh, uh, lack of funding uh, in many, particularly the state public institutions. But uh, uh, still uh, some of the institutions, uh, the private institutions, uh, one of the premier private institution where I belong to Pro Opi General Global University, this is an example of the kind of initiative our university took uh, in the middle of the pandemic. We already had a center, an established center for wellness and counseling services at the university right from the beginning when the university was established. But over the period of the pandemic, the university partnered with this uh, online uh, uh, provider uh, organization called Your Dose. Dost in, uh, in Hindi uh, means friend. Uh, and this has been really, really successful with our students. Uh, so the students could, using their university email ID, they could log into your dose and they can get anonymously uh, guidance from expert counselors. Uh, through this your those uh, portal and this this uh, this initiative uh, for providing online counseling and support services has been really successful at the institutional level at uh, our university and with that i just frankly speaking i am not aware of uh, other such universities uh, initiatives, but I know your those does be, uh, quite a popular portal 
uh, within the Indian context, the many other private institutions are partnering with uh, your dost uh, for providing counseling services. But at, as I said, and in public institutions at the state and central level, uh, uh, a, a lot of initiative needs to be taken now uh, in the post pandemic scenario. And uh, we are going to try to find out what kind of initiatives they are now putting into place in uh, most of the private public institutions at the state and central level. That's all I had to share with all of you. Uh, today, I hope uh, this was uh, helpful for you to get a perspective, comparative perspective uh, from uh, the Indian context that it, despite all the differences of the context of higher education, uh, you know, the kind of challenge, similar challenges that the students have faced uh, even here uh, in India in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, thank you for your attention. I will look forward to hear your questions and uh, respond to your questions during the Q&A session. Thank you. Namaste.